So today we're going to learn how to transform this image into this image. And we're going to do that by using three simple things. A 50mm lens, a flash gun and, believe it or not, a Pringles tube. Thanks for joining me. So today, as we've just said, we're going to try and take um, flower photography up a couple of notches. So you saw from the first image, it was just a uh, simple vase full of flowers in a kitchen. It's actually sat on my kitchen table. Um, but you can see in the background there's all sorts of clutter like ferro liquid, some washing up, uh, the recycling food bin and, uh, and then back out into the garden. But um, it just gets a bit messy. I mean, whilst the flowers look nice, there's too much clutter in the background. So, we need to find a way of controlling the light um, exactly how we want it. So, the Pringles tube. Other brands are available. This is just what we had lying around. And uh, it's really easy. So, first of all, eat the Pringles. Secondly, clean it out, get rid of all these Pringles crumbs and any other mess that might be in there. Keep hold of the lid because you'll need that later. What we're going to do <coughs> is take a carving knife or a, a craft knife or something and very carefully cut two slits at the bottom. Leave about a centimetre or two at the end here. So slit, slit and then cut diagonally and you'll end up with two flaps like this. Now this is just the right size to slide a flash gun into. Yeah, just make it measure your flask gun first if you want, if you want to be precise and make it a, a nice snug fit. Look, you don't want it falling off, but it doesn't have to be too tight. And then rather than pushing it all the way in, just so it's resting over the lip, so it's firmly attached like this. Okay? So a snoot is basically a way of focusing the light beam that comes out of the flash. When you've got a flash and it's unmodified, it just basically lights the whole room up. So as you can see there, a combination of natural light and flash yeah, brightens the whole room. But we only want to light a specific thing, namely one flower out of the bunch. So the snoot yeah, basically concentrates that light into a thin beam straight onto the, um, the subject. And because we're shooting close up in the realms of macro photography, yeah, the light will still be concentrated as it comes out. The further it goes away, it will spread out because it's still coming out sideways here. Most of it's coming forward. So, and as again, things like soft boxes or diffuser cards, bounce cards, all sorts of things. Um, all your different modifiers, you know, your beauty dishes, all this kind of thing. Generally, have um, a white front, a, a layer of cloth or see through material that just softens those hard edges. This lid. Is opaque and a bit cloudy, and it will give some softening to that light. Yeah, keep that's why I said keep the lid. So make sure it's all nice and clean. There's no Pringles left over, and uh, stick that on top of your camera, and then we'll do the next part. If you've not seen my focus stacking video, and you want to take this to the ultimate level, then uh, have a click up here. Pause this video. Have a click up there and then watch that video, then come back. It's not crucial for this project, but it just adds that little bit more detail But if uh, you stack your photos. But like I say, it's not critical to this exercise, yeah? It's mainly about the light and how we're, focus uh, how we're concentrating the light for this, this exercise. So if you want to focus stack, go up there. If not, stay tuned. So here we've got a bunch of flowers sat on the kitchen table. Uh, just quick 360 around it, you see all the clutter in the background, ignore that. And here's the flower that we've chosen, the one sat at the top. We could take all the other flowers out of the vase, but um, we don't need to, because we're just going to focus the camera on that top flower. As you can see, the focus stack is going through, there's a five second interval, so the flash can recharge itself in between shots, and we end up with a series of images. And I'll take you into Lightroom so that we can see how we edit. 
We've created our snoot, we've put a 50mm lens on, we've used a flash gun and we've taken our pictures um, either stacked or normally and then we've put them all into Lightroom and here we are, let's do an edit. Now we're in the develop module of Lightroom, so we've got our image there and first of all we're going to crop it into a square crop or a one by one. So we'll frame it up into the middle. Yeah. Zoom in a little bit, and that's just nice enough. So we've got plenty of space around the edges and a nice central position. So first thing, add a bit of contrast. So we've got to bring out the details, lower the exposure just to touch. This is all personal taste, so you can do it how you like to make the image look the best that you think. And uh, so we're putting some highlight shadows, just moving around the white and the black levels. Bring it down on the background quite dark. Add some texture and midges of dehaze too. Sharpening now, so we we'll slide the sharpening up to about 70%, and then pressing the option key, and then the slider brings in this mask. So it's only sharpening the white bits. So whatever's white is sharpened, everything else is left alone. Midges of noise reduction, lens correction, Z6 isn't recognised here, so. We have to uh, put on the 50mm 1.8G as the equivalent. And then we'll add a brush. So reset the effect, lower the exposure, and then we'll paint out the background. Again, the personal taste, so I'm going to try this. I'm gently brushing around the edges, and that's a bit of a distraction, so we need to get rid of that completely, I think. Okay, sometimes the paintbrush won't do it on the first pass, so I'll press done and then just paint over it again. Raise that on there. Just missing a bit of detail on that flower, uh, on that petal. And just gently paint it and use a nice small brush. There we go, just adds a bit more depth to the picture. Now let's have a look. No, I don't like that bit so much, so I'll delete that. And done. Oh, there we go, almost there. Graduated filter, lower the exposure again. Just get rid of those distractions. Just feather it over the edge of the flower. Two graduated layers on that one. And same for the top, on that corner, and the bottom right corner. Okay, there you go. Pretty much one flower. Let's give it a bit of fine, final bit of polish. So I'll reset the effect. I'll just change this new hue fill, uh, hue adjustment, which is a new thing in the latest update of uh, Classic Lightroom. So just making that colour slightly pinker, should we say? And again, it's all about using the right brush. So, so I'll just um, lay that in. Make sure you don't miss any parts of it. Paint each of the petals. You'll notice I've sprinkled a few water drops on my photo as well as I took it. If you've not got a mister or a sprayer, let's just get a couple of drops of water on, your, on the ends of your fingers and shake them onto the flower. Uh, yellow, green, blue. Quite a handy little feature that I've been asked for for ages. Turquoise. Yellow, greenish, yellow looks quite nice, but you lose the detail in the water drops. I think we'll stick with the red or pink. Yeah, oh no, a bit too much. And there we go. The final image. And you're done. And there you have it. Um, a quick transformation of a simple cluttered kitchen with a bunch of flowers in the middle of the room. Uh, into a really detailed macro shot of a single rose with some water drops on. Um, we use the old Pringles tube. Yeah, remember? Simple little modifier that makes or transforms a photo with very little effort. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, as always, ask me below in the comments. I'll get straight back to you. If you like what you've seen, subscribe and click the old bell so you know that when there's a new video out, you can jump straight into it.
and uh, give it a like as well. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.